This is a guide on how to use the Dark Project software. So, let's get started. At Startup, we're greeted by three tabs, Macro, Panel LED, and Settings. By clicking on any key, the software will lead you to the Macro section. Here, you can arrange all your macros and remap any key you have previously clicked on. For example, if I want to remap F1 or to add any macros to it, I have to click on it and then modify accordingly. With that in mind, we can move on to create macros. Here, we can create new macros by clicking the plus button and we can delete them by clicking the bin button. Below your macros, you will find the delay settings. That means how much delay should be between your key presses. Record delay means it will keep the original delay that is captured when you record the macro. Fixed delay means you can set your delay to a certain number and it will always remain the same. And last but not least, no delay means there will be no delay between your key presses. Now that you have created your macro, you have to decide how it should be activated. If you look above the macro events, you will see a section called keys and delay. Now we'll go over what each function does. Intercept means the macro will remain turned off. This is useful when you're switching between games. If you don't need the macro in another game, but you need it in the future, Intercept can be used to deactivate it until you need it again. Times Play will execute the macro once until you press it again. Hold Play will execute the macro as long as you hold the key down. Loop Play will execute the macro indefinitely until you press it again to turn it off. Times Buffered will execute the macro repeatedly as many times as you press it. For example, if you press the macro button 5 times, the macro will be executed 5 times before stopping. Loop any break will execute the macro repeatedly until any of the keys is pressed. Loop other break will execute the macro repeatedly until any other key than the macro key itself is pressed. In our example, it means that our macro will be deactivated by any other key except F1 because we chose F1 as our macro key. With all this in mind, it's time to move on to the other categories. Single key is essentially remapping. You can remap your key to register as any other key on your keyboard. For example, I can remap F1 to type 5 every time I press it. Please note that while you're in single key mode, the keyboard will not work because you're in direct access with the keyboard's built-in memory. Once you save the configuration or close out of it, the keyboard will work properly again. Media key is the same as remapping, but it will execute media controls. For example, I can remap F1 to raise or lower volume every time I press it. Function key is also similar. It will remap your key, in this case F1, to execute a function like copy, paste, undo, etc. With the macro section out of the way, we can move on to the panel LED section. This is where you can manage all of your RGB backlight settings. Here, you will find several modes to choose from. You can change the color, direction, speed and brightness settings according to your liking. Once you have found your ideal backlight animation, you can simply close out of the software as the changes have already been saved to your keyboard. This leaves us with the last tab, Settings. This is where you can restore your keyboard to default settings. This means that all your macros, remaps and RGB settings will be replaced with the factory settings. We truly hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any more questions, please let us know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.